Welcome back to the Tool Crew. Today we are looking at the newly released Olight Warrior Mini. Uh, this flashlight was released at the end of September and uh, I purchased mine about two weeks ago, but I've been holding off uh, for on doing a review for it because this is actually my first Olight flashlight, at least my first full-size Olight flashlight, and I wanted to get to know the product a little better before giving you uh, my thoughts on it. Well, after a couple of weeks of carrying this flashlight daily, I must say that I am fairly impressed with this light in a number of different ways. Let's dive into the Olight Warrior Mini. So what you'll get with your Olight Warrior Mini is the flashlight itself. You'll get an included pre-attached pocket clip that is a two direction uh, pocket clip, but is only clipped onto the top side. They do not have provisions to clip the pocket clip on the tail end. So this will be a, a bezel up carry in the pocket. Now that's an area of contention for some people. For me personally, I don't mind that so much because as you're pulling it out of a pocket, it's already in position to access the tail switch, which is something that I, I rather like. So uh, for me, that's really not a problem. Now you also get uh, an included magnetic charger that comes with it as well as a lanyard. Now the lanyard uh, does not have provisions on the body of the flashlight itself. In order to attach it, you have to attach it to the pocket clip. Now this particular flashlight comes in two different colors. We have the black with blue accents that I have here. This is uh, the blue accents are gonna be on your pocket clip, the ring around your side switch and on the strike bezel. Now the other option is a desert tan. Now that desert tan option is gonna have black accents uh, instead of blue. Now at launch, they had a camo version of this as well, but that one sold out very, very quickly. Uh, a couple things to note here on the flashlight. First of all, it has a, it's a 6061 aluminum body. They put some very aggressive uh, milling on here that provide for a very nice grip. It's actually pretty comfortable, both in uh, bare hand or in gloved hand. Doesn't, doesn't feel like it's gonna slip at all. So it, it has, well, I say that, it's gonna be uh, back and forth. It's gonna have a lot of grip. Side to side, not so much, but uh, it, it does provide you with a good purchase on this flashlight. Now the tail switch is a stainless steel magnetic tail switch. It's actually a dual stage tail switch that we're gonna get into a little bit later. This particular flashlight will also tail stand. It has three little nubs here that come out, they protrude just a little past the end of the tail switch, which allow this to tail stand. Now I will say that it's a, just a tiny bit unstable if you're not on a very solid and flat surface like we are here. But one of the good things to note is if you, obviously because it's magnetic, if you're on anything ferrous, it will hold very nicely. And it is light enough that it will, even on this pipe, which is not a full contact on that switch, it, it uh, stands horizontally very, very easily. So that's a, that's a very nice feature on this flashlight as well. The charger that you'll get with your Olight Warrior Mini is going to be a variable charger. It's going to uh, can be capable of charging from one amp to two amps. So one amp, one point five, and two amps. So it's a it's a upgrade over what they used to put in for these size of, of flashlights, where it jumped from one amp to a full two amp. So charging times are significantly decreased with this newer flashlight. Now, the power source on this is, an, is a customized 18650 battery, and to access it, we'll just unscrew the body here. Now, it screws apart at the top side, does not have a uh, tail cap, removable tail cap. It all comes with the body itself. So if we get that battery out, this is gonna be a 3.6 a volt, 3,500 milliamp 18650 battery. Again, it is optimized by uh, to work with the electronics in this uh, flashlight. So you will not be able to run this flashlight with an, with an aftermarket 18650. It's gonna be an area of contention for a lot of people. You will have to use Olight's batteries. Now, it has an IPX8 rating as well. So you can see here where the threads are, they're very nicely done as a matter of fact. And then at the bottom, uh, we have a rubber O-ring. And when we put the two halves together, that is gonna create the seal. It's gonna give it that IPX8 rating. It's going to be waterproof. Uh, it can be submerged in up to one meter of water for 30 minutes, uh, giving it that IPX8 rating. So in a nutshell, this flashlight is built very well 
uh, that is going to handle the rigors of everyday life. Well, let's get into the user interface of this flashlight because this is where I think this flashlight really shines. There are six different light modes uh, with the Warrior Mini. And as we cycle through these, I'm going to put the specs for each of those different light modes up here in the corner. And then I'm going to throw in some night shots of this as well to, so you can get an idea of uh, what these what this flashlight will look like as it illuminates in the dark. So the first setting is the moonlight mode. Uh, now to get to the moonlight mode, it's a it's a long press on the side switch and that'll take us into our one lumen moonlight mode. You just long press until you get your lumen mode uh, to your moonlight mode, I'm sorry, and then you have direct access to it. Now originally I didn't think this was going to be a very useful mode. Uh, but as I've been using this flashlight, I found this makes a, a very good reading light. It also makes uh, for navigating in the dark when you have people around you that you're not trying to disturb. You can get just enough light to get navigated uh, so that you're not running into obstacles. And then once you get past it where you're away from people that you can brighten your flashlight up. I just didn't think that was going to be very useful. I really didn't. But as I've used it, I find that I like that setting quite a little bit. Now, the next mode is your low mode or your 15 lumen. Now, to access that, it's also through the side switch. It'll be a single click. But because we were in moonlight mode originally, uh, w that's going to be held in the memory. So when we click on this, we'll be in moonlight mode. And then to get to your... Uh, low mode or 15 lumen mode, you'll just long press the side switch again and that'll get you into 15 lumens. Now, as you cycle through these, you can get to the next two modes, which is uh, this one here is the 500 lumen mode. But when we cycle back through, it's going to drop off the moonlight mode and we'll be back into the 15 lumen setting or the low setting. Then to get to your next setting, which is your 120, again, you'll just long press once you're into that mode and now you're in 120. At that point, you can long press again, and now you're into your 500 lumen mode. Now, honestly, I kind of wish that there was a, uh, a, a shorter break in between those. I wish there was actually another setting, like go from a 120 to a 250 to a 500. I would like to see, because I like to keep my flashlights m most of the time around that 200, 250 lumen uh, range. Uh, for my memory setting. So when I go back into it, it's really not exceptionally bright, but it's not very, you know, exceptionally dim either, uh, just for regular EDC handling. Now, the next mode is your turbo mode. That's your 1500 lumen mode, and it is also directly accessible through the side switch. So to access that, it is a quick double click. And now we are in 1500 lumens. I like the fact that you can get direct in the turbo. Uh, that's something that I haven't been accustomed to in, in my other flashlights is that I didn't never had direct access to turbo mode. And I really find that I enjoy that. It, it is extremely, extremely handy. Now, the last mode accessible from the side switch is going to be your turbo mode. And to get into that one, it's a quick triple click. So one, two, three, and we are in our, uh, I said turbo, I think, uh, into our strobe mode. So quick access into your one lumen moonlight mode, quick access to your turbo mode and to your strobe mode. And depending on where you left your setting last between 15, 120 and 500, a single click will get you into one of those settings as well. So you have direct access into four different settings through the side switch. Something I find incredibly convenient. I love the fact, especially the, the moonlight mode and the turbo mode. I love being able to go direct into both of those modes. Now, there's also an electronic lockout that is on the side switch. Now, to access the lockout, what you'll do is you'll just long press. Your moonlight mode will come on. You'll keep it pressed until the moonlight mode goes off, at which point it will lock the flashlight out. So if we hold moonlight mode, it shuts off. And now when we click on either of the switches, we are in lockout mode. Now, to get out of lockout mode, just long press until your moonlight mode comes on and you are out of the lockout. So when we click back in, you will have access to the flashlight. I like that lockout mode. It uh, keeps the uh, flashlight from accidentally turning on in your pocket. Uh, and then, you know, you can get out of it pretty quickly. So for those that uh, want to have a lockout mode, it, it's, a, it's a really a nice feature. Now, the tail switch is available in two different settings. So in the first setting, 
if it's a two-stage switch. So if you half press, you're going to get into your turbo mode in the first setting. And then if we full press, excuse me, you'll get into your, your medium setting, which is 120 lumen. And then if we full press, we'll get into our turbo mode. So if we half press, oh no, I'm sorry, I apologize. I had it backwards. I've already got it set in the other setting. So let me, all right, now we're in the first mode. So half press will get us 120 and then full press will get us turbo. And then if we release after a long press, it'll shut off. But to get direct into turbo mode from the from the tail switch uh, in this mode, you just click it once and the, the turbo mode will stay on and then click out of it. I like the fact that you can get to the turbo mode and then in the next setting too, you can get into turbo mode through the tail switch as well very quickly. So in our next settings, uh, it's going to be a turbo and then our strobe mode. So in order to get into that, you'll long you'll press on the tail switch and then you'll press once on the side switch. And that will get us into the second setting for the tail switch. So now when we press it, half press, we're going to be in turbo mode. And then full press, we're going to be in strobe. So one and then full press will get us in the strobe. Now the difference between this mode is you can't lock in strobe mode. So if we if we just single click it, it's going to go right back off. Now to switch back between the modes again, you just press the back, press the side switch once, and now we're in the first setting. So 120, turbo. Uh, I love the fact that turbo is available through all, uh, through both switches and in both settings of the tail switch. I find that incredibly convenient. This is this really only took me about 10 minutes to learn it. I read through the instructions once, I played with it for about five, 10 minutes and I had it down. And it just seems to me that this these settings are incredibly intuitive. I love the fact that you can get between moonlight mode, turbo mode, uh, strobe mode, and either one of those other three modes with just a uh, either a click, a single click, a long press. I mean, once you learn this flashlight, it's really incredibly intuitive. And the fact that you can get into all those different modes very quickly uh, makes it incredibly convenient. Now, again, mostly for EDC carry, you probably want to have your 120 and turbo for your back switch. But if you're using it more in a tactical situation, you would want the back to be uh, set in the second setting, which will give you turbo strobe mode that that would be more of a, a tactical setup so in some regards it does have a little bit of tactical to it uh, though the bezel is not a very aggressive strike bezel i can see where where they consider it both an edc and a tactical flashlight now this flashlight uses a TIR, a TIR optic lens as opposed to a traditional reflector uh, this TIR optic lens is known as a real spot lens and it's going to provide a noticeably larger hot spot while also providing a generous amount of flood, as you can see here, as it sits next to my uh, work EDC, the Phoenix PD, PD36R. Now, the 1500 lumen setting on this flashlight states a throw distance of 190 meters or a little over 9,000 candela. Generally, with flashlight throw ratings, you can assume that you'll be able to see very clearly for about half of the rated distance. Uh, it's important to understand that the given throw rating for any particular flashlight is the maximum throw distance that the light will shine. However, after about the midway point or a little further, uh, the, the light tends to dissipate very quickly. I, I've generally found that you can very clearly see up to about 50 to 70 percent of the given rating. And the stated temperature on this particular LED is a 6,000 uh, to 7,000 Kelvin. That's going to produce a bright white light. Uh, I personally like a little brighter light in a flashlight as opposed to the warmer light. Uh, of course, that's going to be a personal preference to the end user. The light switch also includes an LED indicator that will give you an approximation of your battery life whenever the flashlight is on, with the exception of moonlight mode. A solid green light is going to indicate a battery level from 60% to fully charged. A solid orange will indicate a battery life below 60% down to 10%. And from 5% to 10%, you'll get a solid red indicator. Now below 5% uh, of battery life or critical battery life is going to be a flashing red LED. Now your MCC3 charger will illuminate green whenever it's plugged in but not connected to your light. And during charging, the light will be red 
until your battery reaches about 95%, at which time it's going to illuminate green again to indicate that your battery is either very nearly fully charged or fully charged. Now, on the whole, I have been very impressed with this flashlight for a number of different reasons. Uh, we'll go through some of those positives. The first of which is the 18650 battery source, which make this a very compact, EDC-friendly light. I love the overall size of this. It's very, very pocket-friendly. The next is, uh, for me, uh, and I know this is going to be an area of concern for some people, but I like the orientation of the pocket clip itself with the bezel up carry because you pull it out of the pocket, it's already in position for uh, using the tail switch. That's something that I, I personally like myself. Now, the magnetic charging is very, very convenient. Uh, I love how nice and easy that is. There's no flaps to pull back. There's nothing to, I mean, it's just ultra convenient. So that is another positive to this flashlight. The magnetic tail cap and uh, the ability to tail stand is also another good feature to this flashlight. There is a multiple different scenarios where that magnetic tail cap is gonna come in extremely handy. I will say though that this is also gonna limit my ability to carry this flashlight and I'll get to that in just a moment. I like the, the milling for the uh, grip here on the body. Uh, it's very grippy. You get a good purchase on it, whether in, a, whether in the bare hand or in the gloved hand. And that's something I like as well. I love, I love the balance between flood and throw that this light provides. It makes for a very EDC friendly light. Now in some lights, I like to have a little bit more throw than this one's going to provide. But as a, as a standard, just a regular everyday carry flashlight, I like the balance of flood and throw in this particular light. But the most important and the most uh, advantageous thing to, for me for this flashlight is the ultra friendly user interface. I love the ability to get into the moonlight mode, the strobe, the, the uh, turbo mode, as well as the 120 uh, medium mode. And you can additionally get in, if you, if you leave your flashlight in uh, the low mode or the high mode, you have direct access to five different settings, which I find incredibly, incredibly convenient, especially the moonlight mode and the turbo mode. Now, there are a couple of negatives centered uh, around this flashlight. So first is gonna be uh, in, in the power source itself. Because it is an optimized 18650 battery, uh, you cannot replace this with just a regular, uh, regular 18650. You're gonna have to replace it with Olight's batteries to work well with this flashlight. That is an area of concern for a lot of people. For me, it's not quite as important. I don't mind going back to Olight for a, a, a battery that is built to work with this flashlight, but that is something that you, you want to be aware of. Uh, you're going to have to go back to Olight for replacement batteries for this flashlight. Now, the inability to change the clip position doesn't really affect me, but I know a lot of people are going to see that as a negative. It would have been nice had they added a little additional milling down here so you could take that pocket clip, flip it around to the tail side, and be able to bezel down carry it. Uh, for me personally, that doesn't affect me that much because I rather like the orientation uh, that it carries in, but for others, that is definitely going to be an area of contention. Now, the next point is, is an area of concern for me, though. And that's going to center around the magnetic charging. You know, while I find that to be incredibly convenient, uh, f and people that have multiple Olights probably are not going to see this as a disadvantage because they're going to have multiple chargers, multiple magnetic chargers. But just the average everyday guy or gal who's going to be purchasing one single flashlight, then you're going to have to have an additional charger, which is going to run, I think, is around $15 or so, which is not really all that much, but either you're going to have to remember to carry this charger with you all the time to ensure that your battery, uh, you have a, a way to charge your flashlight, or you're going to have to carry an additional charger. Now you can take the battery out and charge it on a regular lithium ion charger, but, uh, you know, that's a little bit more hassle. It's just, uh, you have to remember to, to bring your, your, uh, your charger with you or have an additional one for your vehicle, one for the home. That's really, uh, I, you know, it's hard to, to say that that's a bad thing because there's so many advantages to having the magnetic uh, charging system. It's just so convenient. And then the magnetic tail cap, 
also in a lot of ways is very, very convenient. Uh, one scenario for that magnetic tail cap, uh, and again, the ability for it to, to uh, horizontally stand like that is actually pretty impressive with this light. But one scenario would be if you were working on your vehicle in the middle of the night or in low light and you need to, to light up underneath the hood, that's one scenario where that would come in very handy. Yeah, as well as multiple different others I'm sure you guys can think of. Now the last uh, thing is really the only is really the only thing that keeps me from carrying this flashlight full time. Now, as a millwright and a welder, I encounter a lot of metal dust, whether that be from dust off of abrasive saws or off of grinders, cutting with the plasma or cutting with the torch. You just encounter metal particulate everywhere, and so this is really the only reason that this keep, that it keeps me from carrying this at work is because. Uh, ultimately, metal particulate is going to find its way onto the tail cap and in between uh, the, the, cap it's, uh, the cap and the body itself, thereby either hindering or preventing the tail cap from operating correctly. It is really the only thing that keeps me from carrying this full time. Now, as an EDC, just a, an, a regular flashlight uh, for people who are not working in the types of, of environments that I'm working in, I think this is a great flashlight. Again, some of those high points, I really, really love that user interface, and I love the balance of, of uh, flood and throw in this light. Overall, I grade this incredibly high. I think this is a this is almost perfect EDC flashlight. I'm, I'm really kind of kicking myself for not having tried Olight sooner than I had. But again, uh, I'm just gonna have to get into some of their other flashlights to, because of this company, I think this is a, a really good flashlight. I'm very, very impressed with it. Well, I'm, my name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crim and my review of the Olight Warrior Mini that is out brand new this year for September, end of September 2020. I think it's a great light. I think you should check it out. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one.